Ayrkila from the Ostrobotnia Chamber of Commerce. So please, Paula, the stage is yours. Thank you, Anna. Yes, and I will uh, just finish my presentation. Yes, OK. Yes. Thank you, Anna, and uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Paula Erkila, and I'm working as a director in the uh, Ostrobotnia Chamber of Com Commerce. And uh, I will shortly tell you about business environment in uh, Jakobstad and uh, Kokkola regions. And uh, the purpose is to get your eyes open to see how many uh, enterprises and uh, how uh, how uh, how much uh, working possibilities in many uh, fields do we have here to offer you? Uh, I will share my screen now and uh, close the camera. So just a moment. Now. You should see this presentations. Anna, can you? Yes, we see yeah. it. Yes, mm -hmm. good. Good. OK, uh, let's start with uh, some statistics and uh, then I'm going to uh, tell some concrete ideas where to start to find a job and uh, and uh, so on. So um, let's start with the uh, economic structure here in uh, Jakobstad and Kokkola regions. Like you can see, uh, both regions are standing economically on many feet, feet. and uh, it is very good, uh, good situation, and uh, and also very safe when you have so many uh, different kind of branches. Uh, on both regions, public sector gives work to about one third of all employees. Uh, in Jakobstad, the biggest branch is industry, and in Kokkola, private uh, services and uh, industry are the biggest ones. And uh, because industry is so remarkable, let's see it a bit closely. Uh, at this first map, you can see turnover in industry. Uh, basically, this map shows where industrial activities are located in Finland. And like you can see, differences between counties are dramatic. For example, in Kainu, uh, the industry turnover is over six times less than in Ostrobotnia. And uh, these counties, uh, Ostrobotnia and uh, uh, Central Ost Ostrobotnia, uh, Pieter uh, Jakobstad belongs to Ostrobotnia and Kokkola region belongs to Central Ostrobotnia. So let's make it clear. Uh, and if we see uh, the export figures, the same continues. Uh, the average export number in industry turnover is 59%. Uh, but in uh, in Ostrobotnia, it's uh, the first largest in uh, uh, fourth large, largest in the whole country, uh, 68%, and in Central Ostrobotnia, it's third largest, 71%. And the whole Chamber of Commerce area, uh, the uh, amount of export is 69%. And uh, that's why we like to call this uh, area Export Finland. Uh, if we watch the euros behind those numbers, can we here see that we here in these two counties bring about 1.6 times as much export euros as an average inhabitant in Finland? So this area is very, very export oriented. Um, this is the latest statistic from last week. And uh, we are in the middle of very, very challenging times. But still, we, ha we have managed uh, pretty well uh, comparing other counties here in Central Ostrobotnia and, uh, and Ostrobotnia. And basically, Central Ostrobotnia was the only county which managed 
to increase export comparing last year. Naturally, it's very interesting to see how so how the rest of the year uh, shall go. Is it still uh, still alive and kicking, or what is going to happen? That's what we don't know yet. Uh, what are these rainmakers behind uh, behind statistic and uh, great export figures? Um, in Kokkola, there is uh, we have the largest concentration of inorga inorganic chemistry in northern Europe. Uh, in Kokkola Industrial Park area is also located Finland's third largest uh, general port. And uh, this area is very, very export driven. Turnover of all the companies was last year uh, 1.9 billion euros, of which 92% was exported. Uh, in Jakobstad, we have Alholmen Industrial Park. It's about the same size than, than Kokkola Industrial Park. Uh, in Jakobstad, uh, we have over 60 manuf manufacturing uh, and service companies, and the uh, turnover of all these companies are 1.1 billion euros. And if, if you like, you can go uh, to both uh, Industrial Park's uh, website to get more information. So it's like www.alholmen.ip.fi uh, and Kokkola Industrial Park is uh, uh, kip.fi. Uh, then we have third cluster, which is a bit different. Uh, it is boat cluster. And uh, here uh, in this coastal area, uh, we, have ha we have very long tradition in boat building. And uh, in Kokkola and Jakobstad regions is made world's most, most glorious uh, yachts. And uh, we are very proud of having the whole production chain uh, here uh, in the area. So starting from design uh, to, to selling, marketing and selling, all, all the uh, chain is here in, in our region. In this picture, uh, there is uh, about 40 uh, companies uh, located in uh, Jakobstad area. Uh, maybe some of you have have uh, get to know these companies, but unless not, uh, we have so much uh, many different kind of possibilities. And same picture uh, from uh, Kokkola and uh, in Central Ostrobotnia region. Uh, we have these uh, companies, plus many, many more, but, but these are, uh, you can also hear from these uh, firms today. And uh, last slide I, I show you, it's about uh, how to get more information and also inspiration maybe. Uh, you can find it from the Coastline magazine, and that this magazine can also be found on the internet, uh, coastline.fi. And there are many, many uh, company stories, and uh, it shows what kind of uh, activities we have here in, in this area. And it, it's not it's not only uh, Kokkola and uh, Jakobstad region, uh, but also Vasa region. And uh, next, uh, I think you have a great opportunity to hear some of these uh, great firms alive. So that was my part and uh, have a nice afternoon and I gladly answer your questions if you have some something to ask. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Paula. This was really interesting. Any questions?
now it's we have a few minutes for for questions anyone no one okay so then yeah. we no yes yeah, please question mm -hmm. uh, like uh, so the new person who just visited finland okay like me if i need to approach the companies uh, so this is means this is how the for example these 40 companies in the this uh, slide here have shown so i have to approach like this uh, to uh, what's the possibility or the ways to approach the companies well, uh, I uh, suggest you that you go to company's uh, website and then uh, find uh, contact information. Many of the, these firms have, have uh, human resources uh, department, so there you can find uh, a person to speak with. Okay. 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 Thank you, Paula. Thank you. So now it's time to hear what the companies have to say. First, we welcome uh, Tina Ademola from BMX Group. Tina is uh, HR director and working closely with recruiting issues. So welcome, Tina. Thank you, Anna, and uh, th thanks for having me. Uh, so uh, I will tell you a little bit more about BMEX and uh, as Anna said, I work as the HR director for BMEX or BMEX Group and uh, I am based in, in Jakobstad, Pietarsari and I'm so happy I could come to the office today. We are working remotely, but uh, today I decided it was time to come here so I could make sure that everything is functioning well. Uh, so I will share my slides with you. Let's see if I can get that working. And uh, I did not turn my camera off, but I will do so. So can you see my slides? Yes. Excellent. Uh, OK, so uh, I will share a little bit about uh, uh, BMEX and uh, what that is all about. And uh, uh, as I said, uh, we are a company based in, in Jakobstad, or Pietarsar in Finnish. And uh, uh, BMEX is actually all about calibration. So uh, uh, we are one of the top players in the industry on a global scale. And uh, I'm happy that Paula showed you some statistics before this, because BMX is uh, uh, definitely one of those companies uh, uh, who is really, we are an export company and uh, more than 95% of what we do goes on export. So a uh, very global company. And as I said, uh, one of the top players in the industry. So depending on, on uh, uh, where you look, Look from uh, in the European markets, we are definitely the market leader, and then uh, globally we are in the top three. And uh, what is maybe uh, unique for BMEX is that, uh, and what we do that no other company in this uh, field do, is that we uh, uh, focus on both hardware and software, so we can uh, provide our customers with uh, complete solutions. So most of our competition uh, are are big, big companies, uh, and uh, they don't necessarily focus on calibration, which is what we do. And uh, then normally they would have uh, software or hardware, but uh, no one really provides both. So this is maybe something that uh, is uh, definitely part of what makes BMX a su successful company in this area. So uh, what we do, I said we're all about cal calibration, and it's about finding better ways to calibrate. and. Uh, this is something that has been with BMX from the very beginning uh, when the company uh, was founded. And uh, I will let you know more about that in a minute. Uh, but what you can see in this picture is also uh, quite describing what we do. Uh, so if you look from the left, you see a tablet where we have a, a software called B Mobile, which is a software that uh, can be used when calibrating. Uh, so it's, it's for calibration data management. Same thing in the middle on the laptop, we have uh, uh, our clouds-based software, Logical, which is also used for purposes to store and, uh, and uh, analyze data from calibrations. And then on the right side, uh, you see a calibrator. So this is the hardware that we produce here in, in Piedrasari, and uh, we have, have all the functions here. So it's everything is uh, uh, it's designed, developed, and produced 
from here. Uh, and uh, the calibrator that you see is uh, more or less the flagship that we have at the moment. It's called MC6, so it's a documenting calibrator, uh, very multifunctional, so can be used for many purposes. And then moving on to when uh, BMX started. So uh, BMX started in 1970. So it's definitely not a startup company. Uh, and these four gentlemen that you see in the picture were the founders of the company. So they were all working in the local paper and pulp uh, factory in, in Jakobstad. And uh, they were working as uh, technicians and uh, their job was really to do calibrations. And uh, what they realized was that uh, the way that calibrations were done uh, were not efficient enough. They did not really spend much time on the, on the actual calibration work, but it was much more uh, administrative, writing down um, pen and paper and so on. And uh, it was not uh, the, the best way to do it. So this is how they decided that uh, they want to focus on this. They created their own company and um, pretty soon they, they launched their first product, which was a, a calibrator that you see here. And uh, at that time, this was really high tech uh, for us, maybe with our, our eyes today, it does not look very high tech, but uh, uh, back in the day was definitely uh, really uh, something new. And uh, uh, the calibrators that we produce still today, uh, they are very uh, long lived. So uh, we get in calibrators uh, here to be at Asari for service. So maybe not this one so much anymore, but uh, but definitely calibrators that have been around for, for 20, even 25 years, come in on a regular basis for service. And then maybe a few words about calibration. So this is the new type of calibrator. So this is actually MC6EX, which is made for uh, high explosive, high explosive risk areas. And uh, uh, so calibration uh, is really measuring a value and then you compare it to a reference, uh, which means that uh, these calibrators are uh, actually very exact measuring devices. Uh, so uh, in any industry, I was mentioning already the, the pulp and paper mill, where this all started. And uh, uh, so that is one industry where these are used. And uh, in any industry where you have a process, you usually have sensors that uh, measure di different types of uh, for instance, temperature, pressure, or uh, any kind of electrical quantity. And these uh, uh, sensors with time, uh, they begin to lag. So that is when calibration comes in, because you have to check uh, if they are lagging. And then you, you need to check also, do you have to adjust or maybe even uh, change the sensors if they're getting old. So this is something that needs to be done in any process in any manufacturing industry. And then depending on what you produce, you have to do this uh, more often or you can do it maybe just once a year. That's really depending on, on uh, your production and your own processes. And then what we do uh, for our customers is that we help them improve these processes. So um, uh, when you have uh, high quality calibration systems, uh, then you can, uh, first of all, you can ensure that your quality is, is uh, in a good level and also that you are compliant. Uh, many industries uh, where our customers play, for instance, the pharma industry, they are very highly regulated. Uh, so then uh, they have to have uh, proof that they are compliant with the regulations. And uh, for instance, in the, in the pharma industry, the, in the regulations is also mentioned how often do you have to calibrate. And uh, this is then a way where we come in and, and help them with this. And then also uh, with calibration, uh, having a good system in place for that, then we can guarantee that uh, the data the customer has is accurate, it's traceable. Uh, you can see from, from uh, time to time uh, what the, the measurements have been and uh, the chain is not broken, it's traceable. And uh, then of course we can also help the customer with automation and improving the efficiency. I was mentioning pen and paper back in the 70s, but uh, it's actually still something that uh, 
is is used in in many factories in in the process industry. So uh, we help the customers then to digitalize and and automize and make the whole process much more effective. And uh, with this, then of course the customer can save both time and money. And also uh, uh, for us, uh, sustainability is important and. Uh, we are happy in that sense uh, and lucky that our products really support sustainability because uh, when you calibrate often enough, you can adjust your sensors and uh, this might mean that uh, you reduce uh, the waste and, and also make the whole process much more efficient. And then a little bit maybe about uh, our customers. Uh, so we used to say that uh, we play in many fields. Uh, uh, the process industry in general. Uh, so uh, we used to say in maybe in, in these types of sessions as Talent Cafe, we used to say that it's uh, anything from Formula One to beer. BMX is there. And uh, these are not necessarily the, the main customers for us, but uh, I would say that the main industries where our products are used are uh, uh, the pharma industry that I mentioned, and also power and energy, uh, oil and gas, and food and beverage. These are all really important customer segments. And uh, all in all, we have uh, currently around 12,000 customers worldwide. And uh, these can be anything from really, really small companies uh, to big global, glo global companies who have sites in hundreds of countries, uh, more than 100 countries around the world. And uh, uh, we are present, uh, our, our products can be found in more than 140 countries at the moment. And uh, our customers are really happy normally with us. 96% uh, 96, 96 would, would recommend BMX. And then uh, also uh, for regulation purposes, uh, for instance, the, the uh, ATEX, which means that uh, you have to have a specific type of certification on your products so they can be used in highly uh, explosively high risk areas. Uh, we have that certification and uh, one was then the product that can be used in, in highly explosive areas is the, the MC6 EX that you saw before in the picture. So that means that that product uh, is safe to use, for instance, in any uh, environment where there can be gas leakage, for instance. Uh, that it's safe to use and that it will not create any kind of sparks or things like that. So, so uh, these are things that we need to be certified for. And then maybe a little bit about who we are. Uh, so uh, uh, currently we have a, a bit over 200 employees. It's actually approaching 220 at the moment. And uh, uh, we have then, uh, uh, of course, the, the main proportion of the employees are based in Pietrasvare Jakobstad. So we are around 140 people here. And uh, uh, we have all the main functions in, in, uh, in Jakobstad. Uh, so we have uh, product development, we have uh, production, and uh, of course the, the coordination of sales and marketing processes and also the, the, the admin functions they are based here in Pietarsari. So about 140 people here. And then we also have in Kajani, in Kainu, we have a small team, a software developer team as well. And then uh, for the rest, uh, we have uh, uh, subsidiaries spread out a little bit around the globe. So the biggest one is uh, the, the subsidiary the office we have in the US. Uh, it's close to Atlanta in Georgia. And then we have a, a, an office in Leicester in the UK and uh, another one in Germany, uh, close to Düsseldorf in Mechelen Gladbach. And then we have a small office in France in Lille and also in Toronto, Canada. So these are subsidiaries and then we have also sales offices uh, and uh, they are based in, in Shanghai in China, Mumbai, India and in Abu Dhabi in the UAE. And uh, uh, so nine, nine countries all together. And then, of course, the subsidiary sales offices, they are mainly focused on sales and marketing uh, of our products. And uh, in the US, we also have a recalibration laboratory, as well as in Pietarsari. We have actually two uh, laboratories 
also because we have to calibrate our products before they are sent and shipped to the customer. And these uh, are uh, accredited laboratories and one of the most accurate laboratories you can find in this part of Europe. So, uh, uh, and then in addition uh, to our employees, we also work very closely with our partners, our distributors, and uh, there's more than 80 of those around the globe. And uh, our values, you see there to the right, so precision, it sort of comes with the business. Uh, we are precise, uh, and that's a really important part of what we do. Uh, we also really work to have a, an open company culture. And, and also make sure that we enjoy the journey while working. It cannot all be work, also some play, or you can have fun also while working. And uh, then finally, maybe just a couple of words, uh, what we are looking for. And, and down there, you can see also the address where to go if you want to, to have more information about uh, what kind of positions we have open at the moment. And um, you can also send in an open application. And uh, as I said, we have the main functions here. So uh, the scope, what we are looking for is really wide. It's anything from software developers, of course, to uh, production technicians. Uh, they would normally have some kind of vocational uh, uh, skill so and, and training, so in electronics, for instance. And then, of course, also people to sales and marketing. And uh, if you go to the web page today, you might not find that much, uh, but uh, for sure uh, after uh, next, starting from next year, we will have more again. And uh, we have been lucky enough to be able to recruit also during COVID, so it has not yet impacted us that much. So that was basically my presentation. And uh, I guess that uh, there might be one minute or two for some questions. Yes, thank you, Tina. Any questions now, please? Okay, Lukumanu, please ask. Hello, thank you, Tina, for your presentation and um, talking about BMX. Um, it, this shows that BMX is a global company, but I would like to ask, since your headquarters is in Finland and in um, Pietisari, um, what is your language of operation and to if it's also um, Everest finish, for instance, what mm -hmm. uh, are the demands for international students? What are the levels of, um, what is the level of um, Finnish speaking? Do they need to be able to be part of your your company? And um, yeah. what are you also doing to um, employ um, students, um, especially students um, in Centria, international students in Centria who are studying uh, mm -hmm. um, IT and other related um, programs that matches with your institution? Yeah, thank you. Good questions. Yes, so, so uh, our company uh, or the corporate language is English. And uh, so uh, uh, we do have employees who do not speak any Finnish, Finnish at all. Uh, to be honest, not that many yet, uh, but uh, we do have, have a, it's, it's not a requirement. It's, of course, it depends a little bit on uh, what your job is, what your task is. Uh, uh, so for some positions, it might be necessary for you to know Finnish, but for instance, in product development, it's not. Uh, you, you don't have to know Finnish to work there. And uh, all the company communication, internal communication is done in, in English and Finnish. And uh, uh, of course, with our subsidiaries, we communicate in, in English. So it's, it's not really uh, a prerequisite. Uh, I would say uh, maybe in... Um, in sales, uh, as if you work, for instance, as a sales coordinator, then it would be good for you to know also have some some Finnish Finnish knowledge because uh, you will work really closely with our, our people in production and in logistics, and uh, uh, they all know English, but maybe not that well. So it, it has to be you you have to have a a level of common language. Uh, so that you could work together, but uh, but for instance, in in product development, uh, Finnish is not really necessary, and uh, and uh, for the uh, how we try to hire people from from for instance Centria, we actually have hired people from Centria, I know, and uh, uh, but we we also I would say mainly where the needs would be would uh, be in um, 
product development, of course. We have people doing thesis work for us also currently. And uh, uh, we will also be needing people now uh, to our IT de department. Uh, we have our own IT as well. It's not outsourced. So we need, need people there as well. I hope, hope that answered your questions. Thank you, Tina. Okay, uh, there is still one question, a really short one. So, Kumar, please. Thank you, Ms. Tina, for your like a nice presentation about the company. Uh, my question is, what uh, are the possibilities of an accountant or a finance-related uh, thesis project, internship, uh, or something like that to be mm -hmm. welcome in the company? And does it also require more knowledge of Finnish language? Well, for finance, uh, I would say that uh, uh, depending on, of, of course, on, on uh, what the project would be, uh, it's not necessary to know Finnish because uh, we do a lot of uh, the finance work is also uh, towards the, the daughter companies, the subsidiaries. And, uh, but uh, if you would in, be interested in that, I, I don't know at the moment uh, what uh, the need would be, but uh, I would uh, suggest you send in an open application through the website. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, Tina. We still have an, uh, other questions, but we have to move on now. So okay. it was really interesting to hear hear your your company's yes. story. And if you if you have questions, you're welcome to send me an email. So it's just at at bmx.com. So yes. Thank okay, you. and our our next speaker is to from totally different sector. So Leif Lindberg, Lindberg from Osuuskauppa KPO. Please, it's your your turn now. Thank you. Hello, everyone, and good afternoon. I'm I'm speaking here from Kokkola, and I'll give you my presentation right now. Just a second. Well, okay. Let's start. So, so I re represent a company called Osuskappa KPO, KPO, as we say in, in Finnish. And uh, we are an Osbotnian company and a regional cooperative society. And uh, we are part of the S group. And uh, for now, we are the fifth largest regional co-op in, in Finland. And KPO was founded in 1905. And as I told you, the headquarters situated here in Kokkola. And uh, we're mainly in, in retail business. So the biggest retail business that there we're in uh, is the supermarket trade. Uh, according to that, we have also service stations and, and fuel trade, tourism and hospitality trade, and, and car dealerships and real estate. And those are the five branches that we're, we're in. Okay, let's jump to the next one. So as I told you, we are a part of the S Group, and the S Group is a network of Finnish companies, and it's operating in the whole of Finland, and also it has a few few retail spots in, in Russia and in, in Estonia, and an hotel trade in, in those both states as well. And uh, the S Group has approximately 1,800 outlets in Finland. And, and, and it comprises the co-ops and then the SOK corporations with its subsidiaries. And our mission is to, to together build a better place to live. And our vision is to offer superior benefits and convenience from, from our own stores. And the S Group in, in Finland has a total of, of over 2 million customer owners. And uh, totally we are 19 cooperatives and, and we employ approximately 33,000 people as, as the S Group as a whole. And on this slide you can see 
the different brands that we work under. And then as we see, the number one grocery store in Finland is, is Erst Market. And then, then we Erst Market is a superstore. Uh, and uh, Prisma is a hypermarket. And then Sale is a convenience store. And ABC markets are, are uh, places where you can buy, buy food, uh, ABC restaurants, and then and ABC markets, which are, are small convenience stores where you can buy, buy food and, and daily, daily products. Uh, we are number two in, in department stores and, uh, sorry, number one in department stores and beauty stores. Uh, main brands there are Socos and Emotion. And in, in some of the Socos stores, there's also Marks and Spencer. Small, small parts of, of Marks and Spencer. Finland's most responsible bank is, is under the S group as well. It's called S Punky. Uh, hotel and restaurants, uh, Sokos Hotels is a number two chain in, in hotels in Finland. You can also see many different restaurants brand Rosso and Amarillo you'll find in Kokkola. And then, then different restaurants, uh, espresso and, and coffee house, which we don't have, have here in, in this this cities. We're also a challenger in the hardware trade. Uh, Codin Terra is a brand which competes with, with uh, K-Rauta among those, those stores. Then Osuskoppa KPO, which I present in, in brief. We operate in 34 different municipalities here in, in northern Ostrobotnia, central Ostrobotnia, Ostrobotnia, and southern Ostrobotnia. We have to a total of 1,700 employees, and the sales last year was, was approximately 850 million euros. We have been quite successful during the years. Last year we made a profit of 27 million euros. And KPO of its own has 125,000 customer owners. And, and the bonuses which we pay to our customer and owners went up to 23.1 uh, million euros last, last year. The service network in the KPO area consists of, of four hypermarkets, 32 S markets, 31 Sale convenience stores and 10 ABC service stations. Uh, then we have 37 unmanned ABC stations where you can buy, buy petrol, gas, uh, seven ABC car wash stations, one, one coding terra do it yourself hardware store, and then four emotion, beauty, and well being stores. Two Sokos hotels, one in, in Kokkola and one in, in Vasa, and then 13 different restaurants. And last but not least, seven car dealerships, which are, are under two different brands, Newstead and Automa. Well, as I told you before, we have 1,700 employees. Uh, which, who work either full time or part time, and uh, ninety percent of those people are, are working the first line in, in service, in stores, restaurants, hotels, car dealerships. Uh, Ten percent of our employees are at managerial level, or or, or com something compared to those. Uh, the Employment relationships can be either permanent or temporary. Uh, during the summer, we offer hundreds of some work for summer. We had approximately 700 some 
and uh, we offer our employees first class personnel benefits for instance personnel discounts occupational health care and, and sports uh, benefits and here on the next slide you will see some of the uh, different tasks that, that the people who work with us have. Uh, salespeople is, is perhaps the most common of these, these ones. Uh, we have approximately uh, 1,000 people who works in, in sales in, in our super, supermarkets, hypermarkets and, and uh, convenience stores. In the hotel and restaurant branch, we have approximately 150 people. And, and in the car dealerships, approximately the same amount of people. So we offer, offer many different tasks. And when I told you that we're in the service business, someone asked previously if, if if you can work without talking any Finnish or, or Swedish, there are some some people who who speak speak a little bit Finnish, but they still can do their work. But it's may not, mainly our customers are are Finnish speakers, so so you need to have some knowledge of, of Finnish or or Swedish, depending on in which municipality you work. And uh, as Paula earlier told, uh, we also have a, a website where you can apply for here under APO. And uh, you will find, find this information in, in Finnish and Swedish now and when you come here to Avamet Työ Paikat Open Vacancies you'll find us here under Osuskappa KPO and now today we have we're searching for a, a salesperson to S Market Oulainen in, in northern Ostobotnia and, and then we have also an open application where you can leave if you want to to leave an application there so this is where you will find find open open work op opportunities in in our store so this was was my presentation and if you have any questions please Please go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Leif. OK, any questions? No hands. This was really interesting. So many shops thank and you. possibilities. So thank you. OK, and then we move on. And our next next uh, speaker is Tina Jetnes from Herman's bike components. So, Tina, the stage is yours. Please turn on the microphone. We cannot hear you. Yes, of course. Uh, very. Thank you very much. Uh, much better like this with microphone on. Um, as Anna said, I'm uh, Tina Jernes. And uh, I will today introduce you to a company called Hermans by Components. Uh, we have headquarters in uh, Sansund, just a few kilometers from the city center of Jakobstad Pietarsari. And uh, I've been working at Hermans for 14 years in different positions. Uh, right now I'm working as marketing manager. And I will now share my screen with you. So let's see. If we get it working. Anna, can you confirm that you can see the screen? Yes, it's working. Okay, great. 
So uh, Hermans was founded year 1959 and uh, has since 1992 consisted of two brands, Hermans uh, manufacturing bicycle parts and Nordic lights manufacturing work lights for the off-road machines. Today we are two separate companies belonging to same group. Last year revenue landed at 19 million for Hermans and um, this year we will go a little bit over uh, as it looks like despite Corona. Bike business is a branch that is blooming right now and we have a lot of pr pressure to produce bike components to our customers, the bike producers. We have uh, 130 employees at Hermann's Bike Components right now and uh, about the same at Nordic Lights, our sister company, a little bit over, so totally around 300 employees. Let's see if I can get my, uh, let's see, I have to take it, now it turned page. So Bike Business is a branch um, that is also very international. Uh, we have uh, headquarters in Sandsund and uh, we have a sales office in Germany with three persons and then we also have one person working from Taiwan. We also have a warehouse in Taiwan. Nordic Lights, uh, our sister company, also have uh, offices in, in China, US and uh, Brazil. So uh, we also have English as our corporate language. So what do we do at Hermas and what is our guiding star? We are aiming to be the leading European manufacturer of sustainable, durable and innovative bike components. And uh, this means that uh, we produce bike components in uh, these product groups that you see on the screen. Uh, grips, lights, chain guards, reflectors and rim tapes. Worldwide, we also do over 90% export. The first product we started with six years ago was rim tapes. So we have a long experience and knowledge within extrusion. Uh, we are proud to produce everything here in Sansund. And another important core competence in our factory is injection molding. Uh, we do, pro as I said, produce everything in-house apart from electronics and some metal parts. But um, for injection, we, we have grips, reflectors, chain guards and housings to our lights, front lights for the bicycle and rear lights. And, and we also produce um, most of our um, items in recyclable material or regranulated material. The production machine park is step by step being automated to be able to deliver according to demand. And we also have an assembly function. We assemble the components. For example, we assemble lights, the different parts that we produce. We purchase the electronics and do all the assembling here in-house. And uh, then we also have an aftermarket range. So we we put all our products into packages and send them out, for example, to, to the shops here in Finland. And uh, to be forerunners in bicycle components, we have our mechanic, electronic and optical design in-house. It's, it's really important to, to have so much in-house know-how as possible. And uh, we have also a broad range of product categories which our customers like. It's kind of a one-stop shop. And uh, 
a little bit um, show where our products go. They go to uh, the bike producers uh, around the world. Most of the producers are uh, here in, or our customers are in Central Europe, in Germany, France, and um, Poland, Romania. And uh, they also produce a lot of the bikes nowadays uh, in Asia, China, Taiwan, where we have a person working as well, and uh, a warehouse. Uh, we do also uh, send out to a lot here domestic and to Scandinavia. And perhaps here you can see some brands that you recognize, um, Giant, uh, English, Pashley, Trek, and uh, Tunturi, Helkama, Crescent, Monarch, Nishiki. So these are all our, um, some of the, our uh, customers. So uh, at Hermans, uh, what can I do? What can you do when you work at Hermans by components? You can work at the sales department. Um, there we have a handful of area sales managers. Uh, we have them here in Finland, but they are also situated in Germany and in Taiwan. We have an order, order delivery and invoicing team. So you can also work with export and logistics. We have administrative tasks, accounting, controllers, salaries. We have a function within operational excellence, that is quality uh, questions and sustainability operations. We have tooling shop, we do all our maintenance ourselves. And um, then we have, uh, of course, as I said earlier as well, R&D, team in-house, the development, um, and uh, we have in engineers within mechanical, electronical and optics. We also have a master data team uh, working with our main software, ARP, Lean. Uh, you can work at the warehouse uh, or at the sample order warehouse. We have an IT department. Um, you can work in our production. And there we have different departments. You can work at the assembly, uh, injection, you can work with extrusion, or you can also be a part of the production planning team. And um, marketing department uh, or and HR is also uh, positions or functions at Hermans. These are also uh, available at our sister company Nordic Lights. And uh, the question is, um, what kind of language do you need when you work at these different positions? And that is difficult uh, to write off answer because it depends on uh, the position and what kind of skills that are needed. Uh, Language-wise, English is, as I said, our corporate language used um, since we are an international company. But often it is good to speak either Finnish or and Swedish. But uh, we have, uh, as a demand and supply planner, we have an Italian speaking. He does not speak Finnish or Swedish at all. We have Spanish speaking people in production and many other nationalities. So it really depends if you need to, to communicate a lot internally with the warehouse and so on, then it can be good to have some Finnish or Swedish knowledge. So uh, how do we recruit? You can send in your open applica applications directly via our web page, hermans.eu. And at the moment we have it here under news and uh, there you will find open job application. And you just click and then you can choose English, uh, Swedish or Finnish. And uh, internship is a really, really good way to get a foot into the house. Um, to show your interest, um, send us an open application, send an email. We have all our contact information on the web page. Our HR um, person, Helen Dahl, is mainly handling these things. 
so I'm just uh, supporting her right now because she was busy tonight. And uh, just wanted to show you also how it looks when you come into our web page. Here was the news and events and under here you will find also uh, not just careers, you will also find from today an open application button that you can click on. And at the moment um, we are looking for people, as I said, bike business is fortunately one of the businesses that is blooming despite of COVID. So we are looking for maintenance team leader and logistics staff at the moment. Uh, deadline uh, is 30th of October. So this was uh, all from me and uh, let's go back to the screen. It's always difficult to turn off. I put on my camera and I stop sharing. <laughs> Thank you, Thank Tina. Very good. This was really interesting. Thank you. We have we have one question here. Uh, uh, there is one student at Centria and uh, he would like to know if there is work placement opportunities. I assume this question is, is for you. Uh, yes, there is always possibilities and we are always looking for uh, pe not always, but really often for people for different types of uh, internships or jobs. So the best way is to send an email or and to call. And the contact information is on our web page. Will the students get the material that we we today share? I mean, my PDF, for example. Yes, we can send them. Yeah. Forward. Yes. Yeah. Mm, OK. OK, and the next one is Lukumanu. Yeah, I wanted to ask that how many um, people do you recruit in the summer, like for instance, summer jobs? How many students do you recruit? Um, since I'm not working at the HR department, I cannot give any figures right now, but um, there are both sister companies and I believe they take more to Nordic Light in production approximately around 20 and Hermann's by components 10, but then we also have in the office uh, different places around five maybe. Um, follow up, follow up yeah. is that, sorry for the interruption. Um, yeah. Brahim asked a, a very important question because um, SAP ERP is normally taught in English for international students. I don't know whether y uh, your, your system for ERP is in English or is in Finnish. It's uh, both actually. I have it myself in Swedish, but we are transferring to English since we have a company office also in Germany. So English, yes. Good. Therefore, um, how possible is it for international students who have knowledge in ERP systems to get work placement opportunities in, at, um, at Hermann's? Uh, depending on position, but there are good opportunities uh, opportunities for sure. But it also depends on what kind of job and the skills and to match that with the personality and uh, and also yeah, it depends a little bit where you are going to work. The reason why I'm stressing on this is um, international students have these skills that you need. That is the SAP ERP because mm -hmm. it's a mandatory uh, kind of um, course taught in financial management in international business. Mm -hmm. Therefore, like students are equipped with that. And for instance, when I was in VAM, can I learned SAP? Hermann's bike was a case example that we used to um, use in, um, in, our, in our SAP program. So a lot are even equipped with the Hermann case of selling bikes or maybe using it for accounts payable and receivable. However, it's still difficult for most, you know, to, to, um, to get access to you know, it, some of your companies because one requirement is that you are needed to uh, to 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 have like a perf like um, a sufficient finished skill that is writing and speaking, which is quite impossible because most international students may learn the finish, but it may be 
the communication wise finish, but not um, a finishing uh, a finish that is more related to an industry. So it becomes very, very difficult. That's why I'm stressing on this so that international students who are in this uh, in this meeting or in this webinar will understand and know what to do as to how to um, realize their career dreams in your company. Mm -hmm. As I said, we have uh, actually people working with our systems that don't speak English, no, no Finnish or Swedish. They speak English or and Italian. They speak uh, English and or uh, French or English and German. OK, I think thank you, Tina. Uh, we have to move on. Yep. Unfortunately, there are a few more questions, but the time is running out, so so we continue. So the next uh, company is Rysoft and Johan Boholm. Are you there? Yeah, I hope so. <clears throat> Can you see me, hear me? Yes, yes. OK, good. Yeah, so my name is Johan Boholm. Uh, I represent a company called Rysoft, and I will tell you more about that very soon. And we're located in Kokkola. Can you see my screen now? Yes, it's there. All right, thanks. Yeah, so I'm I'm a co-founder of Rysoft. We've been around for 20 years now. <clears throat> We're a software uh, company, and we also provide some consultation for the healthcare uh, business. Um, we're founded in the year 2000. We're actually a spin-off from a university. Uh, we're privately owned. And what we do is that we create software for measuring functional performance, health status, quality and effectiveness of care. Uh, the areas where we provide these solutions are elderly care, mental health, and also for other vulnerable populations. Uh, we're about 60 employees in the company. And the main office is in Kokkola, and we also have an office in Uvascula. So we're small compared to to all these other companies presenting here today. Uh, yeah, and we have 12 nationalities in the company. So actually, despite the fact that we're a small company, we have many nationalities. So we're, we're in that sense, we're very international. I'm trying to explain a bit about the RAI solution that we base our products on. It's everything is based on something called InterRAI. That is an assessment standard. Uh, and it's an international research community from 30 plus universities that have that are involved in this research community. And they produced a lot of articles that are really good articles around this interi assessment system. So it's its validity and reliability has been tested all over again. So what we have done is that we have digitized that uh, assessment system. So we've created software around that, applications around that. So that's our our part in this process. And the assessment, a bit more about the assessment, uh, it's a holistic assessment of an elderly people, a disabled person or a person with mental health or intellectual disabilities. Uh, the assessment points out issues and problems 
but also possibilities, opportunities and individual strengths in the persons. So it's like an, a universal language across different care settings. So the aim is, the goal here is to provide the right care at the right place and the right time. So we provide tools for this. So we talk about the continuum of care. So for instance, when you get old, you start to need a bit of help first, and then slowly uh, a bit more. And uh, so we, we provide tools for all these care settings. And then a bit about where we are at the moment. We have clients, partners uh, around the world. So we're in, in these places around the world. And just an example, uh, apart from Finland, Switzerland is our next biggest market. We provided the first solutions there in 2003 already. And uh, at the moment, there are 650 care homes in elderly care that use our Rysoft software in Switzerland, in the German speaking part of Switzerland. And we have a business partner there that we cooperate with. Uh, recently, we've also uh, uh, had a couple of interesting tenders there in for the free French speaking part of Switzerland that we have won. One in the Lausanne area in that canton and now the newest one is in the Geneva canton. So here here are some newspaper paper things that were published around this this month so it's basically pretty pretty new so we we find it interesting that we can provide these software solutions from kokkola that everything doesn't have to be there in the in the helsinki area we have five departments in our company administration Customer service for Finland, because Finland is our biggest, biggest market. Nine out of the 10 biggest cities in Finland use our systems. So we have about 200 customers here in Finland. Then we have the international team and uh, with people working towards these, these countries where we have clients or, or prospects at the moment. Then we have the development team, the software development team, which is the biggest team uh, at Rysoft. About half of our staff are working there. And it's a truly international team. And this is the team where we need most like new resources because uh, as we are spreading the software around the world, uh, every country has a bit uh, different systems, so we need to do integrations and so on. So this is the team where we need mostly skilled programmers, software developers, testers. Then we also have a, a team or department called Smart Break. This is a, a workplace wellness uh, system that we created inside our company and that we also now sell around the world. So why us? Uh, we are a family first company. We are health focused. We have an active office. We like to do things together be active together and we have opportunities for growth because we're 
we're growing internationally uh, bit by bit. Uh, the family friendly workplace, we're actually uh, taking part in a program in, in Finland called family friendly workplace. So this means that basically if you need to take some time off if your parents are ill or you're you're having some issues in your family with children or or, or whatever you can use your time for that of course uh, you need to to be flexible so if you if you take a day off then you need to to work to get those hours back but but we're we're very focused on on family so so family first and then then company so our values uh, are transparency honesty and caring and finally we asked a group of people how they would like to be cared for when they get ill or when they get old so basically two things uh, that were pinpointing the answers uh, people want to be treated as an individual like the person that they truly are and then number two they want to be approached by care professionals with respect dignity and love so we try to make solutions to support this so we think this is a very important thing that we do it's meaningful as for applications we have on our uh, website we have a contact us section and there from that section you can either use the contact form or leave an open application to us yeah that was basically it from me so i i want to thank you for this opportunity thank you johan for sharing us this information thank uh, you okay there is one one question in in the chat you said that you need ex experienced software developers. Is there also opportunities for students? Uh, we might have some opportunities for interns, either for the Rysoft brand or then the SmartBreak brand. Uh, within the SmartBreak brand, that, that was the workplace wellness thing. We are reaching out to, to new prospects, so so if you are interested in in that kind of thing you can contact us also for the international team as we are growing we might need more people but at the moment the we don't have have a need in that team because we've recruited recently but one never knows yes maybe in the future yes yes so thank you thank you yes it's been a pleasure to hear these four, four different strong uh, company stories. Uh, and we move on. Our uh, next speaker is Heidi Matinlassi, and she will tell uh, and give some tips for how to find a job in, in Kokkola and uh, Jakobstad region. So please, Heidi, the stage is yours. Okay, thank you, Anna. Can you hear me and see me? Yes. <laughs> Good. And uh, yes, my my name is Heidi Martinlassi, and uh, I'm working uh, with a project uh, called Talent Scout uh, in uh, as a project manager. And my um, my employer is uh, the Jakobstad Reach and Development Company Concordia. And uh, let me show you my presentation. So, can you see that? Yes, it's there. Perfect. Well, uh, yes, the Jakobstad or 
in Finnish, Pietarsaari region includes five municipalities. Jakobstad, Pedersöre, Larsmo, Nykaleby and Kronoby. And, uh, and I have uh, also a, a colleague in, uh, in Kristine, Kristinan kaupunki, Kristinestad, and uh, Kaisa will uh, uh, present uh, that, that part of our project uh, next time in Talent Cafe number five. So, so that's, that's a tip for the next Talent Cafe as well. And uh, well, something about finding jobs and contacts in our region. We all know that the networking is really important and get to know the companies and people working there. There might be or there are hidden places and then it's even more important to know people from these companies. And uh, yes. uh, nowadays, when we can't have job fairs or gather people to other kind of business events to meet physically, you can still find the places to contact with people. If you don't get the possibility to meet people in real life, it might be easier to contact them via LinkedIn or just phone calls or emails, of course. But make sure you've done your homework about the company first. Read about their story and uh, company culture on the website. Follow them on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter or Instagram. Contact via LinkedIn and try to contact with different persons in those interesting companies. Send your CV via open applications or if there's some specific available jobs and con contact the company afterwards and uh, call and make sure you'll, you'll leave a good impression. Uh, also think about what you can offer and contribute to the company. What are your skills and strengths? But don't be afraid to get the start position at first, either if you can, either if you can see the, the possibilities to, ve to develop your career in this interesting company. Show the commitment and motivation and be flexible. And of course, language is important. If you can't speak that much Swedish or Finnish, it's important to get to know these languages a little at least, even in jobs where you can manage to work in English or some other foreign language. Uh, now, if you're studying here in, in Finland, so and Ostropotnia, you have a brilliant chance to, to learn both Finnish and Swedish. Uh, there's, for example, a free form adult education courses in both languages. And show your interest to our languages and uh, that way to our culture and our working culture. That would be appreciated by the employers and your colleagues too. Uh, then there's a really strong uh, like uh, free time activities our region, culture and sports are important and be, people gather after work and school to practice choir singing, do theater or music, soccer, gymnastics, hiking and other outdoor activities and so on. There's a lot of people making things happening for free just to feel the community spirit and togetherness and the commitment and a, they they feel the commitment by a, uh, contributing to the well-being for our inhabitants and they all always need more people to come come and join them 
help and these tasks can be very various and different kinds of tasks. But that's an easy way to get to know more local people and our culture. And that's also a great place to learn, learn and use our languages. Yes, and um, as uh, Paula already named before, there's a really strong entrepreneurial spirit in our region and and uh, our services here in Jakobstad Pietarsaari uh, are, are to help entrepreneurs with their companies and startup packages. Uh, don't hesitate to contact us at Concordia or Kosek in Kokkola if you have some questions how to how to become an entrepreneur or how to start your own company. And uh, ho only in here in Pietarsari region we started 217 companies a uh, year 2019 and uh, we're expecting our closing uh, maybe reach almost 200 startups during this year, though, though this COVID-19. Mm, we have a lot of branches, uh, companies in different branches, totally over 6,000. 6, and uh, all those uh, are found in our business and service directory at concordia.jakobstad.fi slash front page. So you can go and have a check on that as well. Uh, T services provides a lot of available jobs and uh, in our region there's been available possibilities during the whole uh, Corona crisis too, so so uh, we need people all the time. Our companies do that, uh, and then uh, TE services do also have have this uh, Eures network, and they have uh, a lot of online events, uh, job uh, searching events, and next one is. 18th of November. So you can go and have a look at that one too. But then there's also our own regional website, jakobstadregion.fi, where you can find a lot of information of businesses, environment Paula talked about, but also about the living here. So there's some of the biggest companies presented and linked to their website. So you can go and have a look and get to know more about these companies. And uh, you can find a lot of inf information and digital materials such as brochures and uh, videos at jakobstadregion.fi where you can also find out more about our everyday life. And of course, you can always contact us if you have some questions. And uh, there's events coming up, interviews, maybe some interesting news concerning jobs and summer jobs and so. So you can follow us also in social media to get to know more about our regions. And uh, as Paula named before, in Kokkola there's this big uh, industrial park uh, as well, uh, KIP.fi, so you can get to know more about that area from that site. You can also send me your email address so I can keep you 
updated with our welcome to our reach and newsletter or if you just want to know more about the uh, business environment in in the Jakobstad Petersari region so take a contact and um, yeah that's about my presentation and and I hope you find something interesting in in our companies and thank you for listening and thank you for giving me this opportunity to tell about our region. Thank you, Heidi. Are there any any questions to Heidi? Lukumanu. Yes, please. Heidi, thank you very much for your presentation. Um, one point that you made, which is very important to us as international international talent and students is networking. However, um, some of us are having that deficiency in terms of knowing how to strategically and appropriately uh, network with friends. I, I, though you explained that it's perhaps it's not, it may not be enough for people who are so new to Finland. So if you could um, explain and give a case scenario or an exemplary of how an international person should um, strategically, how an international person can strategically network with Finn, what are some of the things he or she should consider before approaching a Finn and so on. So we can do the right thing in reaching um, Finns in the right way. Yeah, that's a really good question, and of course, it it's also always depending on the on the company who you're contacting or you're interested in, what kind of people are working there, and and uh, how much uh, they can and how much they want to tell you about their companies as well. But I think that uh, generally uh, we are really or we are welcoming but uh, we are also a little bit like um, I don't know we're shy people and uh, we're not so much outgoing but we we have a lot of like uh, a lot of information and uh, it it maybe can take some time to get to know a Finn but uh, you can always count on that we're honest people. And yeah, I don't know if this is a good answer to your question, but somehow, yeah. <laughs> so how does an international person approach a fin? That's what I want. How? The, yeah. the ways, the ways, how can the person approach a fin? Uh, go and have, have, have a chat. Don't be afraid. We will answer back if you go and have a question for us. And and but we don't chit chat that that much. We don't. We want you to go straight forward to to your point. Thank yes. you. That's that was what I was expecting. Or that okay. that was what. <laughs> <laughs> good to hear. Okay. Very very good. Okay. Thank you. The, sp the speakers, thank you very much, and thank you participants for, for coming this today. And I hope you have a nice evening, and we continue in November. The next cafe will be held on the 26th of November. And yes, I will. we will send you the material afterwards, and please contact the, the speakers if you have any, any further questions. But thank you. It was nice to, to have you here. OK. Bye. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you.